now we are going to look at process of conceptualization introduction this lesson is about the process of conceptualization conceptualization is one of the important stages of research study in simple words it is a process of defining the terms to be used in research study however it involves a number of steps to define a concept or construct so that not only its meaning is very clear but also it becomes easy to collect data coming to the objectives of this lesson in this lesson you would learn about how to define concept construct and how to identify the indicators and quantify them conceptualization in a very broad sense conceptualization is a process of defining of the terms to be used in research study however when we decide to study or measure a concept construct we need to define it precisely in such a way that not only its meaning is understood but also it becomes easy to collect data in other words it is the process of clarifying concepts constructs and identifying its indicators in this lesson we are going to discuss one of the most important activities of social science research namely conceptualization in a research study usually we use two sets of terms or words the first set of terms includes the term or words which we can point to an object the term or word represents in second set of terms we use another set of terms or words which we cannot point to an object the term or word represents for example if we want to conduct a study of socio economic status and empowerment of women through self help groups in this research topic the first step of terms includes women and self help groups when we say women we can point out to individuals the word represents and record the very features like color height etc similarly we can locate a self help group and count the number of members we can also specify how many of them are men and how many of them are women however when we take up the second set of terms which includes the socio economic status and empowerment and we say socio economic status and empowerment we do not find objects to point out these words concepts like socio economic status or empowerment etc are abstraction are not observable from the observation therefore we cannot study them to study these concepts we first define the concepts constructs in terms of observable characteristics thus we may define socio economic status as the position of an individual in a society in terms of his or her income education social group social recognition and occupation are observable characteristics and are called indicators of socio economic status the figure depicts some of the indicators of socio economic status like income education social group social recognition and occupation now it is easy to study socio economic status because income levels of education social group social recognitions are rec observable characteristics we can collect data by asking questions like for example what is your income next what is your level of education what is your social group are you a member of gram panchayat researchers frequently use terms like intelligence achievements life satisfaction quality of life sex determination organizational culture abnormal behavior etc in formulating their research problems when we use these concepts constructs we need to define in terms of observable characteristics indicators the indicators are a class set or group of observable aspect of a phenomenon which stand for or represent a conceptual definition it indicates the presence or absence of the concept we are studying most fundamental process of scientific research is conceptualization it is the process of specifying exactly what we mean and do not mean by the terms we use in our day to day life in stating a problem the researcher should make sure that it is neither stated in terms so general as to make it vague 
nor specified so narrowly as to make it insignificant and trivial. The most important step in this direction is to specify the variables involved in the problem and define them in operational terms. To illustrate, let us take a study titled Socioeconomic Status and Empowerment of Women Members of a Self-Help Group. The research topic includes two important concepts or constructs namely socioeconomic status and empowerment. For the study referred above, one of the variables identified is socioeconomic status. Hence, we first define the variable and then respond to the definitions in terms of observable facts or characteristics. The process is called conceptualization. To be specific, the term conceptualization means the process through which we specify precisely what we will mean when we use a particular term. Suppose we want to conceptualize the term socioeconomic status, we may conceptualize it as a position of individuals in the society. Then we propose the nominal definition which could be socioeconomic status is abstraction formed from position of individuals in the society. Now we can operationally define socioeconomic status as social status that is position of an individual in the society which is ascertained by certain indicators such as level of education, social group and recognition by the society. The process of conceptualization is shown in figure. First of all we need to define the concepts or constructs, then give the definition, then give the indicators, then give the quantification of the concepts and constructs. Converting a construct into observable facts, pursuing the definition of socioeconomic status, we might decide to ask the following questions to know their socioeconomic status. First of all, what is your level of education? 1. Primary, 2. 10th class, 3. Intermediate, 4th graduate, 5th postgraduate. Next question, what was your total family income during last year? In terms of rupees, we need to give the options. Thirdly, to which social group you belong to? Lower class, middle class or upper class? Then, do you hold any position in your community or the village? First one, no position. Second, ward member. Third, Gram Pradhan. Further, we need to, this conceptualization helps the researcher to quantify the variables to examine their interrelationships. To do this, the responses to the questions mentioned above are given scores or weightages. For example, the socioeconomic status can be understood in terms of the individual A, B and C, education wise 10 standard PG or graduation, income per month below 15,000, rupees 45,000, one and above rupees 15,000 to rupees 45,000. Then we have the social class that can be broadly divided into three categories, middle, upper and middle. And then we have the position, no position, Gram Pradhan, ward member. Then the total SES scores could be assessed, for example, 5, 13 and 9. And the socioeconomic status could range from low, high and middle. On similar lines, we can conceptualize the term empowerment. First, we have to define the concept variable that is empowerment and then respond to the definitions in terms of observable facts, the characteristics. In very simple terms, empowerment is a process of gaining power to do what one wishes to or control. The definition of empowerment suggests is indicators such as decision making with regard to social, economic, personal and political issues. A figure depicts some of the indicators of empowerment. Empowerment could be social empowerment, economic empowerment, political empowerment, personal empowerment and occupational empowerment. The definition of empowerment, we might decide to ask the following questions to know their level of empowerment. First of all, can you take decisions with regard to social participation? 1. Always. 2. Sometimes. 3. Never. Next question could be, can you take decisions with regard to income and expenditure? 1. Always, 2. Sometimes and 3. Never. Third question could be, could you choose a political party of your choice to vote or the last election, were you able to do so? First, yes. 
second option is no. Next question could be to what extent you can take decision about your personal life? 1 can't take decision, 2 to a certain extent, 3 to great extent, 4 free to take decision about myself. Further conceptualization helps the researcher to quantify the variables to examine their interrelationships. To do this, the responses to the questions mentioned above are given scores or weightage. The following table as shown in the figure, for example, individual A, B, C, D and E, a social participation always, sometimes, never, never, sometimes, economic freedom, sometimes, sometimes, never, sometimes, sometimes, political decision, always, never, never, sometimes, sometimes, personal life to a great extent, to some extent, to some extent can't take decision to some extent. The total scores obtained by the five respondents are 8, 3, 1, 2 and 4. And the level of empowerment could be high, moderate, low, low and moderate. Problems associated with the process of conceptualization. Many concepts or constructs used in social research are not yet clearly defined like things or objects of natural sciences. Often the conceptualization of social concepts are ambiguous or misleading. For example, defining concepts like economy, development, abnormal behavior are apparently seems very simple but are very difficult to conceptualize because of several reasons. For example, the term economy refers to gross domestic product, the total amount of economic activity. To get its value precisely is very difficult. The concept of economy is also referred to the economic well-being of people. It is possible that GDP is going up, but that is not the guarantee of economic well-being which depends on many other variables. Thus, Defining concepts clearly can be quite difficult because many concepts have several meanings and can be measured in many ways. What is meant for example by the idea of power? The classic definition is that power is the ability to meet your goals over the objections of other people. That definition implies that unknown people can be quite powerful whereas a prime minister of a country being relatively powerless. From explanations you can see that power can be quite difficult to conceptualize. Even describing what causes crime or even what causes theft is difficult since the very definition of these terms are very vague. Socioeconomic status scales. Scales and indices are prepared after conceptualization and its reliability and validity very much depend upon the process of conceptualization. That is how precisely the concepts have been conceptualized. Scales and indices are generally used to measure the constructs which are not observable. For example, socioeconomic status has a set of social and economic variables. Since it is not feasible to measure the social status of an individual directly, attempts have been made by many social researchers in the past to formulate a scale or an index to measure it. Several scales have been proposed for classifying individuals by socioeconomic status. For example, Uday Parikh scale in 1964, Jalota scale 1970, Kulshetra scale 1972, Kupuswami scale 1976, Srivatsava 1978, Bharadwaj 2001 and the most commonly used scales for measuring socioeconomic status are Kupuswami scale and Uday Prakash scale used for both urban and rural areas, urban areas and rural areas respectively. However, Due to fast developing economy and many other reasons, these scales have been ineffective in measuring the socioeconomic status at present. Hence, considering various factors, Kupaswami socioeconomic status scale have been conceptualized and modified several times. Kupaswami socioeconomic scale 
is commonly used to measure socioeconomic status in urban and semi-urban areas. The scale was first developed in 1976 and is based on a composite score considering the education and occupation of the head of the family along with monthly income of the family. This scale classifies the sample into high, middle and low socioeconomic status as shown in the table. Usually education and occupation of the head of the family are not changeable with time. However, the income ranges in the scale lose their relevance following the depreciation in the value of the money. Therefore, it is needed to upgrade the scale regularly for socioeconomic classification of the study. The changes in the income scale are proportional to the changes in the consumer price index numbers for industrial workers. The consumer price index values are interpreted with reference to a base year. The previous base years were 1960, 1982 and 2001 and the latest consumer price index available for January 2017 has been calculated taking 2001 as the base year. To begin with, we calculated the income scale for the selected years 1982 and 2001 which coincides with changes in base year for calculation of consumer price index by applying the appropriate conversation factors on the original scale. Table 1 that is the modified Kupuswami scale proposed updating for January 2017. Uh, socioeconomic status scale is a commonly used scale in quantitative approach research. A number of uh, socioeconomic status scales have been developed and validated by quantitative researchers. Kupuswami's 2003 socioeconomic status classification is widely used socioeconomic status scale to measure the socioeconomic status of family in urban community based on three variables namely education, occupation and income of the head of the family. It was developed to provide an ordinal level measure of a family's socioeconomic status. It is summated rating scales because a person is usually the head of the family score on the scale is completed by summing up the scores assigned to the responses the persons. Mishra et al. 2005 suggested an economic revision of Kupuswami's socioeconomic status scale in order to account for the devaluation of rupee and is proposed to measure the socioeconomic status of the family. The scale presented below where the scores are given 7 for professional degree PG and above, 6 for graduate, 5 for intermediate or past high school diploma, 4 for high school certificate, 3 for middle school completion, 2 for primary school of literate, 1 for illiterate. Then we have the family income piece per month, the scores range from 12 to 1, 12 for 17,520 or above, 10 for 8,760 to 17,515, 6 for 6,570 to 8,750, 4 for 4,380 to 6,560, 3 for 2,628 to 4,370, 2 for 885 to 2,620, then 1 for below 876. Then we have the occupational score, 10 for a professional, 6 for semi-professional, 5 for clerk or shop owner or farm owner, 4 for skilled worker, 3 for semi-skilled worker, 2 for unskilled worker, 1 for unemployed. Then we have class wise divisions, scores range from 26 to 29 for upper, 16 to 25 for upper middle, 11 to 15 for lower middle, 5 to 10 for upper lower, then less than 5 for lower. To summarize, we can say conceptualization is a process of defining concepts or constructs to be used in a research study. We need to define it precisely in such a way that not only its meaning is uh, uh, conveyed, but also it becomes easy to collect data. Two sets of terms or words are used in research study. 
The first set of terms include the terms or words which we can point to an object or the term or the word that represents for example, a woman. In second set of terms, we use another set of terms or words which we cannot point to an object the term or word represents. For example, socioeconomic status. So, conceptualization helps the researcher to quantify the variables to examine their interrelationships. To do this, the responses to the questions mentioned above are given scores or weightages.